Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we'll shift back to the Western Front to the Battle of Los, the largest Western Front attack by the British in 1915. The British side was commanded by General John French and General Douglas Haig, leading six divisions, consisted of approximately 84,000 men in an attack at Loos, France, against German commanders Ruprecht, Crown Prince of Bavaria, and Frederick Bertram Sicht von Armen, commanding three divisions of approximately 53,000 German soldiers. The attack occurred between September 25th and October 8th, 1915. After a summer of attrition, British command led by Douglas Haig had decided that the idea of using chlorine gas in military operations was a positive situation for the British and gave orders for the extensive use of chlorine gas moving forward. Sadly, both sides were the villain with gas attacks, not just the Germans. With both the British and French being reinforced, rearmed, and with a steady supply of ammunition except artillery, British command decided an early fall attack would be prudent. In preparation of the attack, British engineers began digging in tunnels under no man's land in order to lay explosives under the German fortifications to aid in the assault. The initial attack began on September 25th with a much too short artillery attack. British command then ignored the engineering staff concerned that the wind was not strong enough to use the gas attack properly. The engineers believed due to the weak wind conditions that they couldn't count on it and it may pose a danger to British attackers. Even so, General Hubert Gow overrode the engineers and ordered the implementation of 140 long tons of chlorine gas to be dispensed. The initial assault was brutal on the British, with troops being caught in the open by German machine guns and artillery, and the gas attacks that caused no real damage except a blowback on some of the British troops. The casualties were very high, but due to superiority in local troop numbers over the Germans, the British were able to capture the village of Lusen Gohele. However, due to the lack of communication and reserves, the British could not take advantage of the success to push forward. Starting the next day, the British forces faced off with Germans who had only increased their defensive fortifications. And in addition, the British had expended all their poison gas the prior day, so could not use that even though this day had much better wind. Between the 26th and the 28th, the British attacked with 12 battalions, consisting of about 10,000 men. Out of these 10,000 men, more than 8,000 men were killed, wounded, or missing. In turn, the inadequate British artillery fire that they used before the attack had resulted in no German soldiers being killed from the artillery. The German soldiers had become squeamish and nauseated by the sheer amount of British bodies in no man's land. With the French refusing to move up and provide support, the assault ended on September 28th, and for the rest of the battle was just another series of trench life, attacking at each other when beneficial, otherwise sitting and waiting. One new type of battle was happening over the infantry fights. The Royal Flying Corps had been given a new commander, Brigadier General Hugh Trenchard. At the start of the battle, the aircraft acted mostly as spotters in order to conserve artillery ammo. They found a key use for the aircraft as the pilot could use the new wireless transmitters to confirm target locations. After the first few days, the Royal Flying Corps began actual bombing missions. These were not the strategic bombing of World War II that you often see in war footage. That would be another 30 years or so away. However, the 100-pound bombs they did drop were not something to sneeze at and damaged German troops, rail lines, and supply areas. The losses were immense for both the British and the Germans, but especially the British. The British forces suffered at least 59,000 dead, wounded, or missing, while the German defenders had only lost approximately 26,000 soldiers killed, wounded, or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.